Island Show. And I'm Pixel Cheesecake, and we're back after the re after the recording time ran out. Uh, I guess I'll just make that episode one. Ooh, big episodes. Yeah. Or, or we can steal clips from it and do what Rick and Morty did. Put it on and just do it up. Uh. And it's me again. So if you want to drop yeah. it, just press. Nine. It's helpsy. Yep. This, what's the name of this game again? Uh, Venge. Venge. One of the creators of... Of Poppy's Playtime got wronged, so... Well... This guy wasn't on the team that uh, made made uh, Poppy's Playtime, but like that game is like kind of ripped I off think we're... Hmm. Ah, I see. Poppy's Playtime. We're just waiting on Chapter Three. Yep. So this is in our danger lava lies. So this is in our first time getting uh, directions from a talking head thing. Don't touch lava. That's a uh... That's not so bright there. Nice. Seven. Four. Oop. Four. Zero. Okay. Oh, that. You know what would be really hilarious? What? If Helpsy was the big bad. Yeah. I think she wanted to, to go that direction. Yeah. Yeah. 
and the help seeds are actually, huh. actually being a lot less helpful than we think it is. So, help seed is... has been going... has been called them and it, so is it non-binary? I knew it. Yep. I knew it. Okay, now what? Blink. Oh. Crouch. Don't let the things you love engulf you into a narrow ending cycle of things. So you don't go the other way then. So you don't follow it at the very end. You just drop it and lob it and walk away. I guess. We don't have a help see this time around. I thought I don't touch that. That's a bad idea. Yeah. And since the strawberry thing was a trap. Yeah. The code was set before O. Yep. Oh. Do we actually need help Z in terms of that then? Um, to get the code? I guess. I wonder if there's an achievement if you just step into the lava at that point. Yeah. Uh, Don't worry, I told my helps you too early too. Luckily I know the code. Now, outright saying it puts me in more danger. 
So I wrote the code on one of these stickies. I placed six of them around the paper world. One of them has the right code. This should confuse the red source. The one with the code is probably a bit far back. You'll know it when you see it. It's not what it looks like. It may seem incorrect. The red source isn't too smart. Hmm. Into lava we go! The Vengeance. <laughs> well, maybe I want to take a lava bath. I think that sounds fun. Six. Four, seven, That the achievement trusting your gut. Oh. That jump scare got me. Quite yeah. dead. <clears throat> Star Wolf's animation has taken Rotnik to court and hopes to take back 
what they, they believe is theirs. Rotvik has been extremely secretive about what's happening. Skeptics believe they are trying to cover it up. Every everyone is turning on them. Stay tuned. Says, ah, poor baby, you should rest. He rest your poor little legs. This art sucks. And that's what the red sword said. Follow me. My friend is waiting. But what if I don't want to make friends? Mm -hmm. Need a drink? Um, I'm sure. You, uh, get me a, a liquid death from that. Hashtag not sponsored. Hmm. 
back somewhere. Hmm. What say you, left or right? Left. Okay. We found a new key. So I was wrong. Uh, I just want to see what both uh, things go to. Ah. Pop it with red bloody string. See if we can proceed without having to go down that path. Hey, do you think the chainsaw man could climb up walls with his chainsaws? Uh, probably. Mm. That'd be kind of cool, though. Yeah. Go up to like the side of the building, just mm. yeah. I think the sequence is, uh, is important. Politicians. Mm -hmm. What makes you think monsters exist in the real world? Politicians. Mm -hmm. And you can't convince me otherwise. Mm -hmm. The worst type of them are a lobbyist. I feel like if we had uh, infinite money, we could just set up a lobbying group and then just 
pay people to, you know, do the right policies. And other people would be dumb about the those types of policies. Or go intentionally incorrect with it. Well, that wasn't too bad. Hey, sorry, I haven't been here too much. I can't say much, but keep the stairs in mind. Hmm.
Oops. Oh, try. Well, try saying parkour before you jump. I don't understand why, but it works. Spell hardcore parkour. Up, uh, a Joji ports. Oh, he's going through there. Yeah. So, you've defeated a cartoonist, you're about to defeat an effects artist. Ah! Piss. Parkour. Parkour, parkour! No. you still got some time. Parkour. Parkour? Why? Is there any way to sprint? Yes. That's true. I should have found that to me. Now a word from unofficial sponsors. How's your Pokemon journey going? Paco, Paco! You're doing some real Ninja Warrior type stuff. Yep. That! One, two, piss. One, two, three, four. Welcome back to American Ninja Warrior. Today we'll be running from FX. But uh. <laughs> <laughs> too parkour for you. Carrying around a giant weapon is probably not two-handed weapon on flat, barely holding platforms is not the best idea. The achievement said parkour king. I'm going to kill you, Bob. Don't know the uh, balance thing, I guess. Guy walks to story. What Nick Entertainment's lawyers destroyed Skywalks in court. Proving their error since they proved that Skyworks had planned to destroy them. Skyworks desperately tried to drop the charges, but they weren't able to. An investigation is being made. Stay tuned. Oh. Oh look, it's blood! 
and this chair is bleeding. Five hundred Skywork employees leave. Five hundred Skywork employees left the company in a strike. They're, they joined Rot Tom, Ro Rotnik. Rotnik Entertainment. They, the feud has never been stronger. The, this could pose a serious threat to Skyworks. They, they refuse to address the the request. The they, light lights have been out for days. Stay tuned. Oh, I tried to put on a journalism voice. Yep. Cause when you fall from grace, it's a long way down. You have to face the ways of the underground. Underground. Mm. Higher and higher underground. We were doing two totally different songs, but it worked. Yep. Skeleton. Jack. Manny. Yeah. Sans. Papyrus. <laughs> it's another skeleton. Mercedes. Lucio. A third skeleton. Oh no, so we're being t attacked by uh, Harry House and skeletons. Um. Oh. Button. Button. Okay. We crossed him to skeleton dust. You crafted in him into bone meal. Not a spurt, not a spurt it out over my petunias. Orchids are edible flowers. Mm. Some dig shallow graves. Okay. I oh know it's the Babadook. Looks like that one red frog from Amphibia. Mm -hmm. That show that looked really good, but. I don't know much about amphibia. Hmm. 
seems to be something rising from, well, many things rising from the ground. Dead Space 1, everyone. Jesus, that thing was pissed. Yeah. Oh, there's so many skeletons rising up. It's the start of the skeleton war. Wait, what's... They're talking? Okay then. Oh, did someone have to save you? I hate you harder, or I hate you murderer, or murderer, or. So Wait. Out of curiosity, what's Ah, nothing. Mm -hmm. Nothing is going on up there. Elevator going up. I think the microphone's picking up everything all right. I hope so. Oh, we seem to be falling. There's something. At the achievement expert survivor by standing around in an elevator. In Half Life 2, Episode 1, you kind of do the same thing. Mm -hmm. This is why I'm hyper Half Life 3. Right. And don't tell me it's never coming. Gabe Newell can count to 3. Prove it. He did this once. It's Lucy!
All that was Act 1? Yep. Damn. Acts. Yeah, act 1 and Act 0. A coaster gamer? Yep. Wait, is that it? Yep. Nice... Nice work, faint turnip. And all those other voice actors and... Nice work, Eric Coaster. Mm -hmm. Oh, those were the things I was telling you about for the intro things. <laughs> Put my gamer tag. That's the gamer tag that you use for your channel as well, right? Yep. In the when I go into the video editor, I can put the link to it yeah. with a big box, with a big box that covers the thing, yeah. in, but you'll be able to see it but still. Ooh. Extras? Yeah. Extras, extras, read all about it. Got a bonus behind the scenes. Right, let's see. Hello. Step on the elevator and let's go on the tour. Oh. So this is like a game de development. Yeah. Uh, I Let's see. I'm born or to be teleported to the stroke. A failed jump scare? To get the jump scare sound, I usually will make a scream into the microphone that heavily edited it. This is a failed attempt to create one of those scares. Maybe loud. That's more off putting than a couple of the. Early on in the game, the main protagonist, Justin, would talk. Before, before he was Justin, his character would have been named That Guy You Know. This is an early line recording for that character. Lucy Ooping. This is one of the lines Clearwater, the voice actor for Lucy, said over. No explanation needed. <laughs> Something tells me that's in your vault for permanently now. And uh, no. That's in his vault permanently now. So I didn't go and I, oop, up, oop, up, oop. We're going to run out of steam the parkour. Way too loud. 
We're recording the lines for the help seat. I got too close to the microphone, and this resulted. This is one of the, the one of the many horrible takes. <laughs> forgot the lines. While recording early dialogue for the help seat, I forgot my lines. Come to think of it, I think I was improvising. I didn't have a script. Smiley with tongue sticky up. Hi, I'm Echo Crookster. Ek E K R Coaster. Ek R E K R Coaster. I'm a YouTuber and I'm now a game developer. I created this game for many reasons. I love making games. This is the first game at this massive of a scale. I worked 99% alone on this game. It served as a way to express ideas and concepts not possible elsewhere. I love high action scenes and this was another way to share that excitement. This game also serves as an escape from the pressures of being in the old community and with the ways I was cheated. Excluded, pressured, looked down upon. All of that. This game served as an escape mechanism. After two years of on and off development, here we are today. I hope you liked it. You really sticky out tongue smiley face. Welcome. Throughout development of this game, I went through tons of ideas and concepts before finally setting on the current theme. Continuing to see the development. First steps. I wanted to make a game for a while, I just didn't have any ideas. I came up with an idea of an old facility that was breaking down. Yeah, this game is boring. I worked on it for a bit. I made a working door script and then realized how horrible the game was. So I moved on. Uh, back to the idea world. Back to action. After many hot tub sessions, I had finally created a concept that I was proud of. These ideas were enough to build a new game up. Now, all that was necessary was to find a style. First styles. Tillowait was the first ever created test for this new game. I was going to call the game what be called Glitch as well, with a style that tore and with the style, the lore, and the characters, I was ready to go. Let's see. The style seemed to be the light. The style seemed to the white was based on an earlier style, a comic book style. They used to a lot of green and blues as screen, the scene in the early screenshot to the left. I ended up using, ended up going with the style to the right. If I could go back, I would have chosen the one on the left. <coughs>
backlash. This game was finished on was finished on seeing my wife at the time I was, I was proud. However, when the release when the release the amount of backlash it got for its uncreative mechanisms and styles got too much so I started from scratch again. I started with redesigning the main character, the icon of the game. The frog-like feature. After that I went to and we made the lore. I fit the lore to include real life events. After meeting my friend Justin, I reformed and added more layers to the story. Uh, the previously unnamed character now had a name, Justin Neal. At zero, the unexpected end. At zero, it was developed last after Act One was finished. I moved on to zero. I wanted a small act that had that had ex explanation to how you as the player got to where you are. What better way to do if that do it then cut scenes and mini games I love seeing the technical process behind the elements. One of the most complex scenes to develop was the phone scene. Originally starting as a cutscene, the interactive phone conversation was a fun way to start the lecture. Creating the phone was a challenge. I started with a mask as seen to the left. That would hide the external graphics. The texts were all coded with a new language system I coded as well. I made four endings out of it. Two of them were good, but only one is officially canon. The bike season was super challenging. It started as a completely flat road, but now the it has twists and turns. It is the first time in the game that the game first time in the game that the game learns your behavior and will adjust itself to be more fair to you as the player. Hmm. You learned attack with difficulty. After that scene, after that pretty bold scene, I needed something a bit intense. Now, how does the player get from the house to the forest? What could be better than a bike? Mm -hmm. Why use up valuable resources calculating an entire bike when you can re save all resources and make the handlebars much more detailed? If you can't see the entire bike, why make it? As you can probably tell, this car wasn't designed to be viewed from all angles. When modeling for games, you want to use the least amount of mesh while keeping things looking nice. As you can tell, the front of the car got much more love than the back. What happened to the side? That is called cutting. 
is a common tool used to make games run smoother. Why put effort into calculating pieces the player can't normally see? This is what the scenes look like while animating. You can watch the first cutscene here. Use the bottom the button to toggle this on and off. Second version. TV screen never changed though. This is a really good game. I see it going really well. Like, expanding. Fun fact, the shadows on the curtains are projected. I couldn't get the shadows working. Outside is a bunch of PNGs of trees. I used the torch to hide things. It was fun. <coughs> Using assets in clever ways. The shadow of the trees is a part that's heavily distorted. Distorted. Item number five mentions giving the wonder. The pretzel effect is a mix shader with a clever gradient position. The scenes last much longer than what's seen. At the end, the screen gets really bright. I did this because I wasn't sure if I wanted to include it in the game. The scene was animated last minute. Done. That zero was created very quickly and the result is amazing. It is one of my favorite acts, even though it is so, so short. It provides a great view of the future of the game, of this game. The next act that will be similar to this will be Act 2. Stay tuned. Stages and Linearity Act 1 was developed in two stages. These are split into between two scenes, the normal world and the flipped world. The normal world plays differently than the flipped world. The normal world is designed to feel like you're exploring something, while the flipped world is intended to feel like you're also trying to escape. This is reflected in the linearity. Room de development. <coughs> Each room needed to have the atmosphere perfect. The first few rooms in Act 1 are rusted, decayed, and falling apart. As you get deeper into the building, the structure of the building appears begins to strain out and is and it gets less decayed. Setting the mood. I used many techniques to nail the environment and atmosphere. From vines that slightly move or ground fog that moves out of your way Visual and audio cues subtly hint to the player that something is incorrect. In order to make the player 
feel like they are exploring, I've, I needed to create a bunch of tiny passages and little details in rooms that look natural. Another element is preventing areas from being unreachable to the player. Most of the places you can see, you can see, you can see your, you can walk into. Change in pace. At the very end of the exploration part in the game, you have met with the Pinter. The Pinter is a creature that allows you to enter and exit the flipped world. This is the first time in the game you interact with a character. Wall break. <clears throat> Near the end of the game, FX breaks into a wall to chase the player. This effect was done by animating the mess of the wall. As seen to the right, the wall was animated with many different meshes and swapping them out. Timed with the animation of FX, when the hole in the wall was cut out, the wall split and then falling into pieces becomes a rigid body. Oh, very good break. In the final sequence, the elevator falls and launches it launches as it's propelled into the air and thrown down a shaft. This sequence was inspired by many Disney attractions. The elevator itself was modeled a few times, once as a functional mess, and again as it as destroyed pieces, and again as a collision space. The character, the elevator, actually never moves; rather, the scenery around moves. This prevents the player or other uh, bodies from flying around. Uh, I'm just gonna I'm just going to skip some of these ones. Uh, I think we'll call it for now. Uh, this has been a wonderful time. My name's been Pixel Cheesecake. And I've been Shala. And you've watched a, another wonderful episode of Gaming with Shala. Be sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. And 10 million likes, I'll, I'll, I will bathe in liquid death mi mineral water. Hey, it's an excuse to do a live. Yeah. We will see all of you in the next episode, whichever one we post next. Bye-bye. Bye-bye now.